and welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of H Town Rundown. I'm Gabe Graham, and I'm Nate Thiel, and I'm we're your hosts. hosts. In this edition of the H Town Rundown, we'll be taking a look at the outcome of the Super Bowl, Valentine's Day at HHS, several spring sports opening their seasons, and a couple new businesses around town. <laughs> Super Bowl from a couple of weeks ago. That's a little late, isn't it, Gabe? Yeah. Andrew and I filmed this before our two-week snow break, but we filmed the follow-up once we got back to class. Well, let's take a look. Well, I'm Gabe Graham, and I'm Andrew Dirt. This feature will also have a breakdown of the Super Bowl afterwards, so we'll take it away with this This is Thursday, the, I believe, the 4th, and we're making these predictions, so we're not you know, cheating. So I got the cheat. I'm going to say, I think, 34-28. And I think Mahomes is going to win MVP because who else? I'm also going to take the Chiefs. I'm going to take the Chiefs 35 28. And here's a hot take Travis Kelsey for MVP. All right, I like it. So we'll see you after the big game. Yes. Mom Brady, you're back. Welcome back to our Super Bowl breakdown. As you can see, our predictions were both very wrong. But there's still a lot to unpack in this game, even two weeks later. Tampa Bay Buccaneers shocked the world not only by winning, but winning today. With a score of 31 9, Tom Brady and the Bucks came to Patrick Mahomes. First double digit loss since 2016 for Texas Tech. There's a couple of major takeaways that we got from this game, as well as some key players that turned the time. The most obvious were the combination of horrendous offensive line play, the backup in KC, and a stellar defensive performance from Todd Bowles and the Bucks team. The Super Bowl was filled with great QB plays. Tom Brady established himself as an undisputed go. Patrick Mahomes proved why he has the biggest contract in sports history as he carried his backup over line to the unfortunate. The most notable performance I saw was the Bucks defensive line, namely Shaq Barrett, Jason Beer, Paul, and Vita Vea. They dominated the two times line the whole game, and it just wasn't even close. Well, that's going to be all for the Super Bowl recap. Uh, we'll see you next February. I feel kind of bad for roasting Tom Brady now. Speaking of candy grams, SCCLA had a fundraiser selling candy grams for Valentine's Day. Because of snow again in 2021, they were delivered to students on campuses all day. Let's go to Faith with the story. If you ordered a candy gram, they were delivered today. They were originally supposed to go out the Friday before Valentine's Day, but delayed due to snow. All of this didn't stop the fundraiser from happening. So every year, FCCLA does their annual candy gram fundraiser. So we raise funds and we get the candy grams from all the different schools. And we just fill out an order form for all the kids and they just fill it out. And we get all the money and we use those funds for usually star events. So those are competitive events for FCCLA. Or use the funds to go to the various meetings that FCCLA holds. Or just to go to state events or even in national events, which some of us have been in nationals a couple of different times. And those have been in Atlanta, California, Georgia, all those places. So we just need a lot of funds for that. And it's one of our biggest fundraisers we do. I'm Faith Humphrey from Gob TV. Too bad I have a gaping giant hole in my life. Nobody would ever buy me one of those. Yep. You know how you could have found someone to fill that hole? By taking the matchmaker quiz student council offered to see who should be your Valentine. Shay and Stella bring us a story on the quiz results that were distributed this week during lunches. Check it out. I'm Shay Gals. And I'm Stella Satterwhite. And we're here taking a look at the Student Council's Matchmaker fundraiser. This year, um, the student body wanted to do the matchmaker again. Um, and so we started it hoping that all of our results would be in by Valentine's Day. But then it snowed and we were out for 11 straight days. So we are just now getting the results out. So if you want your results, you can go buy them during uh, lunchtime and they're $2. The money will go towards our state conference or our summer workshop. So I think the matchmakers are usually pretty accurate. Like I got my girlfriend as my like number one match, but so did he. I'm not really happy with mine, but uh, my mystery matches are... I feel like my celebrity matches were not what I was going to get. Um, I don't even know half of them, but I think it's pretty cool that this is being done. 
I got Gabe as my number one. And I got Andrew. Yep. And I got <laughs> seasonal depression. I got Andrew Dirks as my number one friend. I guess the matchmaker is very accurate. I don't think you're on to anything here, Gabe. Speaking of donuts, a Dunkin' Donuts franchise is coming to town very soon. They had their groundbreaking ceremony recently across from the Arvest Bank, and Alexa and Brooke were on site for the ceremony. I am so happy to see new business coming to Harrison. Let's go to Alexa and Brooke for more on that. I'm Alexa Ramsey with Gob TV, and I'm on the construction site of the new Dunkin' Donuts coming soon to Harrison. When do you think you'll be opening this location? So we plan on opening the Dunkin' here in Harrison June 1st of this year. Our, our franchisees have been dun doing Dunkin's for, for many, many years, um, and they just continue to grow. So um, I think that the Dunkin' Corporation is just very easy to work with, um, and they're excited to grow, too. Can't really beat this location here in Harrison, and uh, we just are excited to be a part of the Harrison community because it's a friendly community. Um, it's a growing community. The population grows, uh, seems to be growing year over year here. Um, lots of new businesses come in here, um, so that's why we chose this location. Thank you so much. Thank you. With Gob TV, this is Brooke Boyd. Staying on the subject of food, next up is another installment on our food truck series. Yeah, Nick, Jasmine Ty has officially closed their doors and converted their business to a food truck. Let's give it to Luke and Cole with the story. Here we are at the Jasmine Ty food truck. Today we have the privilege of interviewing the food truck's owner, Ning Level. Food truck business coming the idea after the COVID effects hit us last March. Um, the state of Arkansas shut us down and said due to go only due to the food expense and the building, the electricity and everything else. The overhead was so high, we couldn't make it. We our sale dropped almost sixty percent. You know, the, the cost here is way less and it fit what we needed to to serve our customers so Harrison can have Thai food. Pandemic affect my restaurant a lot because um, most of my customers are older. Um, they're afraid to come out. Um, it's a lot of what can we do, what can we do, are we willing to take this risk of us risking, you know, to serve a customer um, we did every possible thing we could to to save and be the the best possible way to help taking care of our customer and our employees. You know, but it's a lot of things to do. Right now, um, we open Monday to Saturday, eleven o'clock till six o'clock. We prefer our order in by five thirty so we can clean up and be home. You know, by six thirty. We do have um, a Facebook page too. We do have a pad thai, the fried rice, uh, pineapple fried rice, spicy noodles, pad seal. Those are pretty much, you know, number one, I guess, um, our customer favorite. We can do different packages depending how big and how small they are. Um, just give me a call and I'll put you guys up. Um, for lunch, we run about from 11.30 to 1 and dinners. Um, Right now is 5.15 to 6 o'clock, you know, so we prefer calling ahead because it takes longer to cook the food so you don't have to wait so long. So we improving on the time and the skill of the chef to cook to get the food to you guys faster, but all the meal is individually cooked, individually prepped, so it takes us a little while to cook. Most of the ingredients are made fresh from scratch and all being a healthier alternative to similar styles of this cuisine. Remember to call 870-743-9277 if you'd like to have an order placed at Jasmine Thai. Jasmine Thai is located in the parking lot at the new location of Harrison Battery Tire at 104 Bluebird Street across the road from Home Depot. With Gob TV, this is Luke Lunsford and Cole Clavey. Hey Nick, what's easier than the baseball? Softball. You're absolutely right, Nick. Our next feature comes from Claire, Colette, and Maddie with the fast starting softball season. Hi, this is Claire and Colette with GOG TV, and we are here with the Lady Goblin softball team talking to them about their season starting next week. What are your hopes for the upcoming season? To compete every time we step on the field, um, practice included, games most definitely. And when I mean compete, I mean 
play Lady Golf and softball and get the job done no matter who we're facing. We had two seniors on the team that stepped up and take and taken ownership in it, and then the leaders outside the lines, is what I like to call it. Um, Sophia Hankins and Lady Mandelis are really owning what needs to be done every day, practice in and out. But we got junior leaders like Kaylee Wolf and Cameron Casey, and sophomore leaders like Kate Bell and Claire Cecil. Who's the strongest leader on your team and why? Mm -hmm. I definitely say Wolf. She never lets anything get to her, and she's always, she always has a positive attitude. What are you most excited about for this season? Um, just to play with all the people, and we have a bunch of freshmen coming in, and we play with them all summer, so I'm super excited to just play school ball with them. They're super nice, always fun, so. Who's someone you can always depend on the team and why? I can always depend on Cameron. She's a good team leader. I'm excited to get started. I'm excited that we're getting an opportunity to play and I'm very excited to watch these girls get on the field because they've been working really hard and there's a lot of talent. My on-field focus is the outfield but uh, just in general as a coach I want to make sure the girls are working hard every day and giving their best so we can be successful. The Lady Gobs start their season March 1st in Rogers. For Gob TV, I'm Claire Clavy. Another sport that opened last night is soccer. Both the Lady Goblin and Goblin soccer teams played at the stadium last night in a benefit game against a team from the East, Mount Home. Olivia McGuire has a look at the Lady Goblin soccer. Lady Goblin soccer opened up their season yesterday with a win over Mount Home 6-0. This year's team, I think we'll have a couple that we're definitely going to stand out as the leaders. Uh, first, I think Olivia Paul for sure. She tends to set the tone and work ethic. Elise Bell, again, hard worker. She's going to be a captain on the field. Toughest opponents this year in the conference, I'm thinking probably going to be Dardanelle. Uh, overall in the state, I think it's going to be the same two that it usually is, Valley View and Pulaski Academy. I'm looking forward to playing the sport I love and... Uh, strengthening the bonds with my teammates and just winning. I like the hard work. Everyone, like, you know, we're all pretty close. I mean, even if we aren't super good friends off the field, on the field, we seem like we are. So it's just a really good team to be on. I thought we had a really good shot at State again, and it just kind of, we didn't get that. I think this year we've got a chance to just continue the tradition. Uh, conference championship, I think, should be our number one goal. So I think that's absolutely something we can do. And I think that we're going to have the weapons that we can absolutely defend the state title that we didn't get to defend last year. Lady Goblin Soccer is on the road to Cylon this Monday. Good luck this season, ladies. From God TV, I'm Olivia McGuire. Last and most definitely not least, we go to the legendary Nick Field for the basketball season recap. postseason play. Our Goblin boys team had a trying season from the start finishing with a losing record of 310 in the regular season. Yeah, Nick, you can't blame them though. Our team was relatively young with only two seniors, Ethan Edwards and Bryce Bones. Even after a wonderful display of three-point shooting by the Goblins, it still wasn't enough to knock Huntsville out of first round district play. Harrison suffered a loss in the first round of district play at the hands of Huntsville, falling to them 45, uh, excuse me, 54 to 59, ending their season. Before we wrap up the guy section, we would like to congratulate Ethan Edwards and Bryce Bonds on an amazing high school basketball career. On the other hand, our Lady Goblins held on to an incredible undefeated season in regular season games. After beating out some of the top teams in their conference, such as Shiloh and Berryville, and last year's state champions, Farmington. You're absolutely right, Nate. But Farmington didn't award the Lady Goblins with a hat trick of losses to the Blue and Gold, and instead sent them home to play for third place last night. This was their first loss of the season. 
Despite their loss in this retirement, the Lady Goblins are heading to the regional next Thursday and Friday in the resort, and we hope that they can get back on the winning streak they've maintained all season. Good luck to Coach Williams and the Lady Goblins. Congratulations to the Lady Goblins on an undefeated regular season, only losing one game thus far in the district tournament. They are on the road to Ozark in regional action next week. Good luck to Coach Williams and the team next week. Well, that's all for this edition of H-Town Rundown. I'm Nick Thiel. And I'm Dave Graham. And we'll be seeing you.